Well, it is amazing. I am so happy to be here, and you guys would not believe that the rush that it took me to get here um, and to be here at the last minute. Um, it is today and yesterday and all these days has been such the whirlwind, and um, I'm just so happy to be here. Now, it, the funny thing is, is that um, I come in here and I come to you. I was so excited listening um, to, I think that's Jim talking, and I love, you know, I do that all the time. I get so excited about, um, you know, just just when I find something, when I, when I stumble upon something, I get so excited about it and just love sharing it. So um, I loved listening to him and the excitement that he had about what he was sharing. And um, for the part that I did hear, I remember, um, and I'll say this right quick, Jim, I remember the first time I discovered the idea of space. Um, you know, in philosophy, I was a philosophy major, and they used to talk about space all the time. And it was amazing because I realized in studying and thinking about space, we wouldn't even be able to read words if it wasn't for the space in between the letters, you know. Everything is about space, my, you know, our, our recognition of one another, and we're all in this cosmic suit together. So that is, that's fabulous, and um, I look forward to hearing you again next week. Uh, I literally just ran in the door, though, and so I'm still trying to get my bearings and still trying to um, discover what it is that it, it will be coming out of me today. So um, I, you guys are in for a treat because I'm in for a treat. We'll see. I'm, I'm just being obedient and showing up at the time that I'm supposed to show up to share you love with you. And that's what this journey is really all about. So this is Sandra Bishop, and I am talking to you on ACMI Gather, as well as those of you who may be watching me on Ustream. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited that you're here and that we're taking this spiritual journey together. So um, let me let me do what I always do because it sort of sets me, aligns me correctly um, as I recite for you the introduction to A Course in Miracles, which is found in the book of Course in Miracles. I hope I have my copy with me. Yeah, I do. Um, which is found in A Course in Miracles right behind the table of contents, I do believe, and uh, it reads as this, like this. It says, this is a course in miracles. It is a required course. Only the time you take it is voluntary. Free will does not mean that you can establish the curriculum. It means only that you can elect what you want to take at a given time. The aim of the course is not to teach the meaning of love, for that is beyond what can be taught. It does aim, however, at removing the blocks to your awareness of love's presence, which is your natural inheritance. The opposite of love is fear, but what is all-encompassing can have no opposite. This course can therefore be summed up very simply in this way. Nothing real can be threatened, and nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. Oh, I love you guys, and I love that. I just, I love the course. I love this spiritual journey. I love all of this. So um, let me tell you a little bit. Uh, you guys, for those of you who haven't heard me before, I am. I try to keep it real. Um, you will hear the real me and nothing but the real me. So help me God. And, uh, and so I will share with you what's going on in my life as well as my reflections from A Course in Miracles. This past week, I, you know, I don't know what's going on in the cosmos. I, I have no clue. But the other night I was sitting in a coffee house and um, talking to some friends. Now, this probably started at the end of last week's, you know, crazy things happening. But um, I was sitting in the coffee house the other day and um, all of a sudden, there's this big rush. I don't know if it was um, Monday or whatever day it was, but there was this big rush. No, it wasn't Monday. It was Saturday. 
it was a big rush some everybody trying to get somebody out of so i see all these cops come into the coffee house and you know and people were like standing around watching and i'm trying to figure out what's going on so as they were bringing the guy out um what we were told was is this guy had gone in the bathroom and he was totally taken off his clothes and was in there acting crazy and erratic and so one of the guys that was at the coffee house had to call the police and the police came in and got the guy and put some clothes on him and then had to take him out of the establishment. Well, then fast forward to yesterday, I'm at home and I am frantically working on trying to bring a, get a bunch of stuff together, um, one of which is some new stuff I'm, I'm plugging into a website that I'm, you know, having built. And uh, so we're we're busy trying to plug some stuff in there and make sure everything works. So I'm sitting there and I'm on my computer when all of a sudden I see this guy who is a neighbor of mine's and he's running down the street and he's screaming out loud that he's butt naked and he sees me and he you know he starts to to talk to me because I think I'm the only person that because I'm at a safe distance, I'm the only person that was actually standing there witnessing his, um, his meltdown. And, um, so I, I, I whip out my old trusty, uh, cell phone and I start to record and I'm sitting there on um, my porch and I'm recording everything that he does. And um, as it unfolds in, before me, I was reminded of something that I've been listening to. Now, you guys, I am, same thing happened to a girl at the Barnes and Nobles. I mean, it's, I don't know what this is. I know that this guy was strung out on some drugs. And it could have been the same with the guy in, in the coffee house. I'm not quite sure. But it, it seems, and so I, I started thinking about this idea of being naked um, and what the nakedness means, you know, if there is some type of symbolic meaning, because, you know, I'm into symbolism and, to, and, and all that stuff, but what it means to just shed your inhibitions, well, I... That was a bit much, but um, but what it means to just get naked, and so um, it was it was interesting because what happened with me in particular was is that I was um, I was listening and I've been listening to these books I I, I have um, now that I'm listening to Will Coleman I do he does this Sunday night class. Um, I've hooked up speakers to my computer, and I just have it where I can hear it all over my house, and it's wonderful. So, you know, when I when I started listening to him online with his Monday night class, I thought to myself, and I, and and I listen to ACMI Gather too in the same regard. I, so, what I do is when I'm not listening to Gather or not listening to Dr. Coleman. I shovel through and go through some different things that I can watch and listen to in order to keep, you know, adding things. So on this particular day, I, and for the last few days, I've been listening to a book by um, Leo Toys. How do you say that? Tolst Leo Toystel. I don't know how I messed that up. I've been saying it right for I don't know how long. Tolstoy, story, Leo, he wrote um, War and Peace, and then he wrote this book called This I Believe. And in this book, he is really investigating his whole idea about, um, that he had about Jesus, the Bible, and he's really going on this excavation. Um, Tolstoy, story, is that how you say it? Um, <laughs> okay, she said, is uh, pronounced Tolstice, is that how you say it? But, but, but but you know who I'm talking about. So so he wrote this book and um, it's called This I Believe. And what he taught, what he did was is he wanted to go back and he wanted to read the Bible, much like the course that Doctor Will teaches. 
um, he wanted to, you know, read the Bible and then go back and compare the Greek and the Hebrew and really get down into the meat of what Jesus was talking about in this book. And so he goes through and he, you know, he's like, you know, translating like line by line and really looking for the meat of this book. And so he said to us, and as part of this, um, as part of the, the class or a part of the book that he's talking about, that he came across something very interesting that Jesus said. And he said that Jesus, you know, he had his own little commandments. He wasn't there to, to overthrow the commandments of Moses, but he had his own commandments. And one of the commandments, the first thing that struck him, struck Count Leo, Tolstoy, however you say it, the first thing that struck him was this idea of resist not evil. Resist not evil. Now, I was, I was struck by that, not because he was struck by it, but in the sense that it was, you know, as he was saying, resist not evil, I was thinking to myself, now he's not saying be courageous. He's not saying fight. He's not saying anything about, you know, I, I'm, I'm always talking about fear and how people give into their fear, but he's not saying anything like that. He's saying resist not evil. And so I kept thinking to myself, why would he say it that way? You know, is this not evil? And it, it and, and what I got from it, what I gathered from it was one of those things that I do. And, and I say to myself all the time, when I don't know what else to do, when I don't know what else I should do, what I do do is stand. I have this tendency to stand still. And I believe in, that there is a power in silence. There is a power in non-resistance. There is, um, as Jesus says in the Course in Miracles, he, he said, if you, if you defend, you've already attacked yourself. So it's not a self-defense. I'm not defending. It means simply that, and I'm not even running. I'm not running because that to me is cowardice and fearful. But, but it means to me, it, 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 it says that whole thing about stand. And I shared that with you guys last week as I was talking about the movie, The Stand. Um, I don't know if it was last week or if it was a couple of weeks ago. But that movie called The Stand by um, Stephen King, I do believe it was, where Stephen King had said that, um, you know, where he's going through, not Stephen King, but the characters in this thing. And they're going through and there was at the end, there was somebody that needed to take a stand. And the only guy that was left was a guy who couldn't talk. And um, and so this old lady tells him, she was like, you know, I need you to go and take this, you know, and make the stand for Christ or make the stand for God. And he was like sitting there saying, oh, no, I can't do it. You know, he just kept saying, no, I can't do it. And so she was like, you know, what do you mean you can't do it? You're the last person. You're the only person you can. Who can? Because I can't do this and he can't do that. And, you know, and so you're the only person left. And the guy was like, you don't understand. And he was trying to do it through sign language, but she didn't understand. So he got frustrated. He grabbed the sheet of paper and he wrote out these words. And it said, when she read it, she it said, but I don't believe in God. And the lady laughed and she says, that doesn't matter. God believes in you. So it, 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 it's the same thing of this, this idea that we must figure out what it means to just stand. And, 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 and what I always tell people is, is like not only stand, but hold a space for the possibilities of what could possibly happen. So as I witnessed this guy, as I was, oh, oh, oh. And, and so let me, let me not, um, let me not forget this part. So, and, and this is just totally out of the blue. On Sunday, I decided after I came from another church service, I needed something, um, some energy wise. And I turned on to Agape. Agape Live is uh, agapelive.com or agapelive.org. It's Michael Beckwith who does his church service out of California. And so I was catching the tail end, like I just did, Jim. I'm catching the tail end of this. And what Michael Beckwith was saying was, is that we have a tendency to lock people up for 
you know, for their vices and not necessarily for violence. And so he's talking about the overcrowding of, of, of all these prisons and all this stuff. And, you know, he was like saying to, to some extent, we need to decriminalize some of the things that we have criminalized. And, you know, he was like sitting there and, 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 and as Leo, as this book was going through, it was talking about the same very thing. It was this perception or this idea that we are always trying to demonize and criminalize things and because we're trying to resist evil, you know, and, and, and if, if Jesus had said, judge not, you know, in, in what ways are we judging? I mean, we're judging that somehow this person is doing something wrong. Um, we're judging that, um, that, that, that we need to put them away. You know, we're, we're making all these judgments and yet we want to see ourselves as innocent. So in this book, they're investigating this idea of whether or not we are really doing the commandments that Jesus had said in being forgiving and judging not and, and in resisting not evil, you know, whether or not we're really truly standing in that space and holding that space. And so I kept thinking back to myself, like, wow, you know, my brother is my savior. I'm sitting there and I'm holding this camera and I'm watching this naked man as he performs up and down the street. And he starts to call my name, my name, because I'm sitting there and I'm witnessing this. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, man barely talks to me. And um, and now all of a sudden it's like, you know, I'm, I'm listening to him as he, as he starts to, you know, all this stuff. And I'm thinking, wow, you know, what is this for me? What does it mean for me? Because, you know, I don't know about you, but I have the perception that whatever is before me is for me. Whatever is before me is for me. It's there for me to deal with. For me, it, 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 it comes up so that I can not only uh, teach what I know, but learn what I'm teaching, learn who Sandra is. And so I'm sitting there and I'm looking at this and I'm thinking to myself, okay, why? You know, why? Why all the nakedness? Is there some need that I have um, to deal with this idea of, of, of laying myself open? Ah, uh, ah, uh, you know, I don't know. But I, you know, I was just, I was struck by it. I was struck by the, the whole encounter. I'm struck by all that is coming up and coming out for me and trying to figure out what it's all about. Um, this Sunday, this coming Sunday, I'm speaking at a church here in Cleveland and I am excited about it as always. I mean, I'm, I'm always excited whenever I get a chance to talk to people because it is, you know, I, Feel this opening, you know, this openness as if it is an energy that flows through me. And as it comes through my, me, I can't help but be blessed. And so as I'm, as I'm, you know, as I'm blessing others with what I'm saying, I'm also blessing myself. I'm receiving the same thing that I'm giving out. So it always feels so good when I get a chance to talk. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there and I keep thinking about these naked people. Why is it that they're so naked? Let me, let me, let me read the, um, I, you know what? It's so funny when I try to read what all this is. Think to myself, what a wonderful world. Yes, it is such a wonderful world. And I don't want to sing for you, but oh man, I love that song. Um, born Nikki. Is that what it's it? Born Nikki. Oh, boy, me, kid, we are innocent, and to what point is it not okay to be naked unless we're crazy? Uh, you know what? And and one of the things that I, I found interesting was the police response to you saying that you have someone naked on the street. The response time, if you guys um, get a chance, unfortunately, I don't know, in my divine wisdom, I don't know what it was that prompted me to do this, but I posted the video of what happened on my Facebook page. Uh, 
And I had a lot of ambivalence about it because I didn't, it, it, it wasn't so much that it was, I know the guy. I mean, he's a, he's, he stays right next door to me. So, um, so I had some ambivalence about doing it. But on the other hand, I don't know that people understand what the impact of these drugs are. Uh, is Sandra D. Bishop on Facebook. Funny, funny, funny. But, um, but, but I don't think that people really realize the impact that these drugs have on a person's psyche or on their brain. Somebody who is normally quiet and docile to go to that extent and to, you know, have absolutely no, you, you know, it was like a psychic or, or, or a psyched out trip. Now he did say, Oh, Sandra, you are God. You know, that was one of the things that he said. I mean, maybe that was, you know, um, maybe that was divine wisdom. Who knows? But, 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 you know, it was like this whole trip that he was on. And I kept thinking to myself, how sad. But, but on the other hand, it is, um, I, I think that to some extent, we need to be aware of, um, the, the impact that these drugs have on people. And that sometimes when they, they, um, participate or they use drugs, they are, are forever changed. Their mentality is forever changed. Now, from doing healing work, I know how dangerous that is to, in my mind, even think to myself that, that there is something out of alignment with him. But, but then there's the other part that is, you know, trying to say, okay, let, this is before me. I need to deal with this. I need to see it and, and, and to realign my thinking. Um, if that is what's necessary and to figure out a way that we can help a community what what the guy was on and and I'm sorry I'm I, I don't care y'all y'all listening to me so listen <laughs> um it's no sense in me and apologizing for what I'm saying because I'm saying it and it must be a reason for me saying it um but but he but he's smoking something that his mother told me it was called wet and um Wet is, um, from what I understand, I don't know quite for sure, but I do believe it is the, the, the tendency for, um, for people to dip a cigarette, which, which is what a, a friend Brian, I think, told me. He said that you, you dip it in embalming fluid. Is that what somebody else wrote on there too? Yeah. And, and then they smoke it. And it's like, I'm, I'm like thinking like, what, what would possess a person? What would possess a person to, 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 to not only do it once, but to do it repeatedly, you know? And, 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 it, and, and I love the, the, the idea of arrested development, you know, when you, when you, you know we're on a path, you know we're on a course, you know we're developing and evolving, or at least we should be. And then all of a sudden you do something that um, that causes you to arrest your own development. So what is that about? I'm, I'm not quite sure, but, um, but it's... Uh, <laughs> It must be, it must be something crazy. Now, this is funny too. I don't know if you guys heard that sound, but, um, my, my Facebook post or my Facebook, um, inbox comes directly to my phone. And so I immediately got a, um, a, a message saying that I needed to accept this friendship. She said we have 12 mutual friends. So there you are dancing. Uh, I've got you and I, um, I've accepted your friendship and now I need to put this on, uh, vibrate so it doesn't interrupt me again. Okay. So there, um, having said that, but, but it, it's, you know, it's, it's kind of crazy to me to, um, to want to participate in that. But then, I, you know, I also know that, um, that one of the things that, um, Leo was talking about in, in this book was a scripture that said, not only resist not evil, but it also said to agree with your brother quickly. 
don't go and, 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 and he was talking about not harboring any anger. If you had somebody that was angry with you or upset, go and, and apologize and, 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 and seek peace first up front, you know, and the Course in Miracles, when we talk about this being a practical course that tells us this thing about our brother and our relationships to that, our sonship. It's not so much about the relationship. We, we always think that it's about our, you know, our relationship to God or with God, you know. But God is. We find this thing in our brothers. You know, we participate in God, in our spiritual journey with our brothers, not absent from them. Not this thing about, okay, I'm going to go and go pray to God. Now, I will tell you this. When I'm doing my forgiveness work, I don't know about how you do your forgiveness work, but I know that there are times when I find things a little harder than others, some things a little harder than others to forgive. And so what I do is, is I take that into prayer. And um, when I'm doing my prayer work, I, you know, I, I say, I, I'll say, you know, heal my unbelief or, you know, there is a desire that I have that I want to forgive this. Show me how, you know, dear God, please show me how to let this go. Please, God, show me, show me what to do. And, and inevitably, something will come up. The person will come forward. Um, something will come up. I'll get a chance to see it differently. Something comes up that helps me out with that process. But I participate in that process by welcoming the process. By saying, I'm willing to forgive. I want to forgive. I want to let this go. And so certain things come up so that they can come out. And so I think that for all of us, you know, we've got to figure out. And, and we do that through the course, but also through whatever teachings. I mean, whatever. Because it's all about love. So how do we get to? How do we, how do we stay in a place of of forgiving, of seeing our brother as ourselves, as, as knowing that what we think about him, we'll think about ourselves. What we feel about him, we shall feel about ourselves. Never forget them. Never forget this. You know, somebody needs to get that phone. Never forget this because in my brother, I shall find myself or lose myself. And so it becomes this thing of how do I get past this? And once I pray about it, you know, I am better able to, you know, to, to work through those situations, to see it differently. And then the wonderful thing about that is, is that usually that person that I need to forgive shows up. I mean, they just show up. I mean, that's so cool. And and, and so it becomes this thing of, of not even about, you know, oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean that or anything like that, because usually that's unnecessary. Usually... When, when I'm in a place where I'm ready to forgive and somebody shows up, all I got to do is say hello. And the conversation goes and, and it goes and it's like putting one foot in front of the other and it just moves forward without this whole thing about, well, you know, you did this, you did that. Well, you know, I got this one guy who still owes me quite a bit of money because he had hired me to do a job for him. And, um, and, and then after he hired me, we signed a contract and, you know, hired me. And then, you know, later on down the line, as we as I produce all this work, then he says to me, well, you know, my proposal didn't get approved. And so I have no money and he didn't pay me. And so it is so funny because I'm sitting there and I'm thinking to myself, well, I'm, you know what? You didn't pay me. I'm really not ready to talk to you until you come up with some cash. I'm willing to forgive him. But I'm not willing to let go of the fact that you owe me cash, you know. <laughs> I mean, and so you know, uh, uh, you know, I don't know. It's like, okay, what place in him is not willing to let go of money that um, money that I earned? And so you know, but I also know that that is you know like this, you know. So so y'all pray for me, and I'm praying for him, and I'm praying for me because I need the money. <laughs> so anyway, um, how did I get there? <sighs> so, um, <laughs> so anyway, 
this is so cool. So, so let me, let me, um, give me one second. Let me read some of this. Um, Brian is over here tweeting to me. Um, and he, he talks about, um, he's talking about, um, joining formaldehyde. He's chatting with me off of the Ustream window while you guys are chatting with me in the ACMI gather. Um, he talked about the formaldehyde. He says they want to go out, way out and stay there. Is much like the desire ex to experiment with LSD, except LSD opens up spiritual links and wet messes you up. Okay, so yeah, I've not experienced either one of those, um, but Brian, I do appreciate um, your <laughs> your uh, perspective on that. So um, I believe when people strip down naked when on drugs, they're dealing with unresolved subconscious issues okay and that's that's probably so true and from my acmi gather we are possessed power of decision is our last remaining freedom freedom in this prison world of arrested development i do not need this anymore mm, okay oh i'm sorry i'm so sorry i didn't know it would interrupt I don't have a sale and forget it does that to folks who do multiple dimensions. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's okay, um, darling. Um, I rolled with it. You know, I love the fact that um, you became a part of my my talk. Uh, that's cool. I, I have no problem with that. Um, so, so as I opened up my book, it says, Heaven is restored to all the sonship through our relationship. For in it lies the sonship, whole and beautiful, safe in your love. And it is so true. Um, it is, it is, it's wonderful to meet you too, sweetie. It is so, so wonderful um, that, that we get a chance to share, you know, to, to look into um, perspectives and how we see things. I know for me, I'm constantly trying to understand and, and grasp the lessons that are in it for me. And sometimes the lessons are just in seeing my brother is perfect. I shared with you guys before, um, if you've listened to me any, any length of time, that I'm always challenging God to challenge in me those places that may not be as loving as others. And so it's like if I'm challenging myself and if I'm challenging um the thing that we call God, you know, to, to, to show me all those places where I may be hesitant to love, he may show up in, in my judgments, you know, he may show up in these areas where I need to work. Because let me say this, it, it's funny because as, as um, people have commented and the guy was calling my name, the naked guy was calling my name. And, um, and people were leaving comments. I was sitting there and I was thinking to myself, I, I honestly, folks, I, I this is not a judgment or anything like that, but I can't even remember the last time I've gone out on a date with a guy if I know he smokes. So to say that I would go out or date somebody who was doing something like that, wet or drugs, it, it, it's a stretch. <laughs> it's a stretch for me because that's, that's just not the type of energy that I like to hang around. Now, it's not because I have judgments about it. It's just because, you know, if I get to make choices for me, I get to say, you know, what I want in my, you know, in, in my experience, what I want to gravitate towards. And if it's, you know, if, if smoke is something that I, you know, that I don't care for, okay, then maybe I'll be challenged on that repeatedly. But for me right now, it's like I haven't had this thing that says, well, Sandra, you got to deal with, um, you, you got to deal with this. Um, I'll tell you, in Ohio, we stopped, um, there was this thing, this whole push to stop smoking uh, anywhere in public facilities. So now you don't necessarily see people when they pull out a cigarette and light up. Um, but, but, you know, sometimes you, you do know when people are lighting up and smoking cigarettes, sometimes you can smell it. Sometimes you just know it. Um, I have not 
dated anybody like that. Maybe that's why I'm still single because I, you know, who knows? But uh, but that was an issue for me. And so it's not that um, that I feel any judgment or any anger or any resentment towards them. I'm, I'm trying to, you know, trying to be as honest and as naked as I can be about this issue. But it's just not a choice that I'd make. And so um, I try to, you know, I try to be true to me. And being true to me says that, I'm, you know, I'm not necessarily in uh, on board with the whole smoking and the drug that drug stuff i'm just not there so uh, since i get to you know to some extent choose what i'm around um that's not a choice for me now it, it is interesting though as i'm saying that the idea popped into mind um another book that i love to um, refer back to is the book called thoughts or things and that is by um I will think of who it is by it shortly, but I, for some reason right now it is Prince, Prentice, Prentice Mulford. And uh, it was written back at the turn of the century in 19, 1900 and something, 1909 or something like that. But he was one of the original thinkers um, in, along the New Thought realm. And Prentice Mulford said that Thoughts are kind of like free agents, free free radicals that are out there in the air that we can't help but be influenced by because not only are thoughts connected to people, but they leave energy bodies, energetic bodies out there that have a tendency to um, to linger and can be attached. You know, they can attach themselves to you if you're not careful. So he says is that when you're in, you know, we've got these states of whether when we're sending out energy and states and when we're receiving energy, we're receptive to um, energy when we're sleeping because we are naturally dormant. But when we're awake, we're sending out energy. When we eat, we're taking in energy. So there are these moments when we're either sending out or we're taking in energy. It happens throughout our course of our day. So there are certain times when you are impacted by energies that, you know, that you may not have a desire for. So sometimes I realize that I am in situations, I am in arenas and areas where the energy is just, just seems negative and heavy. Now, now, thank goodness, I, you know, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I've got a very strong presence. Anybody who's been around me knows this. I've got a very strong presence and I have a tendency to be able to transmute energy. I love the fact that I can do that. I can basically walk someplace and, and, and as a friend of mine said the other night when we were talking that I've got such a high wattage going on that my energy usually offsets other energy around me. But then there is this tendency that, um, that happens that when you're not consciously sending it out, you can also feel and be infected by or affected by somebody else's energy. I have met people and been around people that the moment they come into the area, you can feel this heaviness like lead. I mean, it's like the depression around them is so great and so enormous that, you know, that, I, you know, it's how do you even walk with that? It just seems like it would just be exhausting to carry around negative energy all day. So since I know that I can lift up energy, I'm always in the habit of, you know, of not only just, just transforming energy, but sending it out and sending out love. That was one of the things that I loved about that book, The Celestine Prophecy. I'm going to get to those comments in just a second. But that was one of the things that I loved about the Celestine Prophecy. When the Celestine Prophecy talked about ways of transmuting energy, you know, ways of, of drawing energy from nature and things around us that we find beautiful and uplifting, we take that energy and not only do we take it in, but we take it in and then we send it out to others and those that are around us. And we have the ability to affect and transform that. And I know I've gotten in debates with people about this because people will say, oh, you know what, that's not what, the, you know, that's not what this teaches or that's not what that teaches and 
you know, you shouldn't do this and you should do that and blah, blah, blah. But I know for me, ah, I know that if I have that ability, if I have that power to affect somebody um, for a positive change, that's what I'm going to do. Because you know what? It is all about all of us. I mean, I know it's only one of us here. And so if I change my mind, all minds are changed with me. And so all I got to do is just change my mind, transform my experience, and I'll be good. Anyway, so um, let me get back to the course. Let me let me read these because uh, I see the learner here. Be who you are and say what you feel because those who mind don't matter and those who matter don't mind. Dr. Seuss. Hi. I love that. Amen. Preach David. <laughs> all perfect always except in judgment of ego. All righty. Yeah, that is the truth, isn't it? Except in the judgment of ego. So I um I turned the page and um and so let me let me read this. I don't even know what it says, but I'm going to read it just because I turned the page and I saw an arrow that I drew at some other point in time, some other year, some other date. I see an arrow pointing at some words. And so I'm going to read that, um, what I'm, what I see because I turned the page and it's here. That is what the Holy Spirit does in special relationships. He does not destroy it nor snatch it away from you, but he does use it differently and as a help to make his purpose real to you. The special relationship will remain not as a source of pain and guilt, but as a source of joy and freedom. It will not be for you alone, for therein lies its misery. As its unholiness kept it a thing apart, its holiness will become an offering to everyone. <laughs> Don't you love that? It's like you can open up the book and it's just all of a sudden, it's, just, it's right where it needs to be for you to say what you need to say. So, um, so you know, I am, I am, I am, oh, okay, so let me read this here. Uh, let's see. Mm. Okay, so brother, take not one step in the descent to hell. For having taken one, you will not recognize the rest for what they are. And they will follow. Attack in any form has placed your foot upon the twisted staircase that leads from heaven. Yet, any instance, it is possible to have all this undone. How can you know whether to choose the stairs to heaven or the way to hell? Quite easily. How do you feel? Is peace in your awareness? Are you certain which way to go? And are you sure the goal of heaven can be reached? If not, you walk alone. Ask then your friend to join with you and give you certainty of where you go. That's out of chapter 23, The War Against Yourself. <laughs> I love that. You know, um, and, 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 and for me, this was not, I, you know, this whole week, all the stuff that I've been going through, has not been about anybody other than me and my awareness. Um, it's been about me trying to understand me, which is what it's always about. It's always about us making peace with, getting to know who we are, and then teaching who we are. Um, as I prepare for this coming Sunday, I, I don't know if I told you about guys about this, but I got this call and um, the minister asked me if I would speak on this coming Sunday. And um, and he said right away, you know, um, well, you'll have to let me know what you're going to talk about. And I said, the mythical life. And, <laughs> and it was so funny because, you know, for me, it's, um, you know, when we talk about the mythical life and the mythical journey, I'm always looking at it like, okay, I'm on this yellow brick road. I am on there. I've got certain things that I need to pick up along the way as I make my way to the land of Oz and, and ultimately back home. 
And so what is it that I need to gain? What is it that I need to learn? What is it that I need to share? And who do I need to take with me? I mean, lions and tigers and bears, oh my. Or is it the, you know, the, the, the scarecrow, the tin man and the, the lion, you know? And who are those people in my life? And really, they're all me. They're just aspects of myself. And so as I go along that road, I know that I'm picking up aspects of myself that I need to develop, that I need to to learn from. And so, you know, it's always about this, you know, figuring out where I am on the path and just moving forward. And I mean, for all of us, to some extent, that's what we're all doing. We're all on our journey, on our hero's journey. And that journey is about finding, you know, where we are. And, and what we're supposed to do. So I say what is before me is for me. And it is for me to deal with and to figure out love in that situation. So if Jesus is telling me in, in, in whatever form, in whatever book I choose to pick up, if he's telling me that it's all about love and how to get to love, I'm not trying to make excuses about, you know, um, this idea that some things are just so egregious that I can't forgive or that I can't move past it. You know, I'm not trying to get caught up in justifying my anger or justifying reasons why I would condemn my brother or judge my brother. I'm not trying to justify those things. I'm trying to understand the places in me um, where, where my normally loving self that usually only sees God, sometimes see as a glitch in this matrix, this matrix that we call life. And so when I see a glitch in the matrix, what is it that has been changed? What is it that that I need to see? What is it that I need to stop and behold and and try to see anew? And so, you know, I'm I'm always looking at those things to see what it is that I that I have to change and what I have to do. Um, Here's another comment. So if you read only chapter one in ACMI and AC, A Course in Miracles, read chapter 23, The War Against Yourself, Veronica Gabriel. If you read only one chapter in A Course in Miracles, read chapter 23, The War Against Yourself. And that's what Veronica suggested. Read The War Against Yourself. And, and I tell you, it looks juicy. It looks so juicy. You know, um, I I think to some extent we are always, um, that is the real battle. The real battle is the war against ourselves. And uh, I love that quote. Somebody said that I've met the enemy and the enemy is us because truly we are our own worst enemies. Um, And so as I think about, you know, my own perceptions, my own judgments, the places in me where I think that I have, that I need to really, really check it out, check out what I'm thinking. Um, Those have been challenged. Those have been challenged. And so, so I'm sitting there and I'm thinking to myself as this guy is shouting at me and he's saying to me, you know, you are God. And then he says some other sexual stuff. You you know, if you watch it, you'll see. But he's screaming to me and he's saying, you are God. And I'm thinking to myself, yeah, and so are you. The difference is is that I know it. Um, I, I was on Dr. Will's channel yesterday and this woman typed in a question and she wanted to know, how could it be that you guys say you are God? And it was so interesting because, uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm not one normally to stay silent. I don't know if you know this about me. If you do now, I'm not one to normally stay silent, but I, I do like to sit back and listen. The Course in Miracles says that what is missing is always what you fail to bring. And so it always gave me this perception that I needed to show up, show up fully and give my truth. So I, um, so as I was thinking about that, um, she was saying, you know, how is it that you can say you are God? How is it that I can listen to that guy and say that I am God and not be, um, not be tripping about it? (laughs) 
it's because I also know that um, I, I love the image of, of everything, you know, everything, everything. That we stay in a holographic universe, and in every infinitesimal spot is the allness of all the universe. At every spot is the the allness. I mean, it's it's like you know we we have this perception that there is a concentration of of this over here and a concentration of that over there, but it is you know pure potential to be all of everything at every spot, every place. So the in a drop of water, a drop of H two O lies the entire ocean and you know how much of the the earth is covered in water one tiny drop of the ocean h2o is the same thing as that big collective h2o whether you're talking about in a pool or whether you're talking about in the ocean so that tiny drop of god that i am is the same tiny big drop that makes up this cosmic consciousness that we know to be god it is all one not in magnitude, but in kind. It is all in there. G-O-D. And so I love it. I love being M-E. Me. <laughs> this mental equivalent is what I love. M-E, mental equivalent. I'm, I'm always looking for that mental equivalent, that, that person who understands and knows the truth about them too. You are at one with. All that is, you and your father, mother, God are one. You know, we, we, we have this tendency to want to separate out and, and differentiate, but it's all in there. Oh, and I love that fact. I love it that I know it and that you know it. Or if you don't, that you are on the journey to knowing it because that's why you're here. I mean, that's why we're all here to discover who we really are. We are spiritual beings having this human experience. You're stuck in the body, the rest of your development, just for this moment. It's, it's a brief moment in time. Um, this wonderful writer said that, you know, at, at some point, all of us will be a thin strip in the sediment on the side of a mountain somewhere. You know, this marks the sojourn or the life in times of Sandra's generation, you know, but we're all here now by divine appointment. And guess what? We're here to remind each other of how wonderful and great you are. And so, you know what? You, I, we have this ACMI gather. We've got Ustream. We've got Facebook. We've got places where we can remind other people about their greatness. But really, what you're doing the whole time is you're reminding yourself. And that energy just overflows. And that's why it's so easy for me to say that the water changes when I walk in the room because I'm on high. And because I know where I get my, my inspiration. I know where I'm sourced. I keep saying over and over again, I love saying it, that God is the source of all supply. No matter what it is, no matter what you think, no matter what your experience has been, God is the source of all supply. So when we get it twisted, when we, we, we start thinking that it's something else, when we get confused about what's really going on, it, it, it asks, how do you know? What does it feel like? What's the energy around it? And yeah, we have a tendency to think that we feel with our bodies. But really, feeling takes place in the heart too, you know. And you guys, it is so wonderful when you when you learn how to connect that heart space, your heart space, with the heart space of another. Oh, I love this stuff because it just it works. It works absolutely. So um so so let me um let me think. What am I? What am I feeling? What am I thinking? What am I? Where am I? So, you know, everybody else does this like CD thing, and I don't know that I'm necessarily, I, you know, I sing all day, but I'm not trying to really sing to you guys. Um, 
and I don't know if I shared this poem with you before or not, but I'll share it with you again. I'm not running out of stuff to say. I just don't want to jump into something else that's going to take me way off of, off of the mark. Um, so here is the poem. You never can tell what a thought will do in bringing hate or love. For thoughts are things, their airy wings are swifter than the carrier dove. They follow the law of the universe, each thing creates its kind. And we speed over the track to bring you back whatever went out from your mind. I probably did read that because I love it so much. You guys, um, it's so much, it's so much to share and so much to be aware of when we're out here. Um, most people walk around in, um, what do I want to say, blissful ignorance and not realizing the power inherent in their own being, not realizing what they could possibly do if they just focused in on it. Um, the Course says that it is uh, that an untrained mind can accomplish nothing. And there are a lot of people out here who have untrained minds. I'm not trying to say that everybody needs to get on the bandwagon and think like I do or think like you do or anything else like that. I think that we are all to some extent right where we're supposed to be. Um, but, but we have to have faith that there is a purpose to our being. And when I have faith that there is a purpose to our being, I always think that that my existence is not just about me and me alone. My existence is about this one whole that is God. And, and as I participate in that and I bring myself fully to the table and I'm willing to get naked, Willing to set it out there, I guess, to some extent, share freely with love and with honesty and trust. Um, and, and I'll say this because I just saw Barrett enter the room, not, not because he entered the room, but I saw him enter the room. And I love, I love the honesty that Barrett brings to his conversation. Um, sometimes he's just like that guy who, took it all off, you know, he takes it all off and he, he sits there and he looks at his stuff and he, and he exposes it and, and shares with you um, from that place. And I love that honesty. So bless your heart. <laughs> yeah, get naked, whatever. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I love that. So I'm willing to to keep exploring, keep growing and, and keep seeing what it is that God lays on my heart, how he reveals it. Um, how she reveals it to me and as I do so hopefully you'll be along with me on this journey so you guys I am at Sandra said it dot com if you didn't know that Sandra said it who said that Sandra said it dot com I'm still working on my website and so when I do the relaunch again I hope you guys will check me out um, you can also friend me on Facebook at Sandra D Bishop but it's better if you follow me or not follow me but um, if you if you like my little fan page, it is uh, Sandra Thrives, Facebook.com forward slash Sandra Thrives. And if you follow me on Twitter, I'm tweeting all the time. And that is at San Bishop, S-A-N-B-I-S-H-O-P, just San Bishop on Twitter. I'm all over the place and I've got stuff going on and I'm excited to connect with you. So, hey, you guys, you know, I love you. It's time for me to go and uh, bow deeply uh, to Barrett and let him take over. But um, I love you, and I thank you guys for watching, for being here with me. If you can make it out on uh, on Sunday, if you're here in Cleveland, Ohio, the address, I think it's 117, uh, 117th in Buckeye. If you can make it out, I'll post it on my Facebook page. So uh, friend me, follow me, whatever, and uh, I'll have the exact address for you. You guys, I love you. All right. See you later. Okay, Barrett, I'm turning over the mic to you or whoever. And you guys, it's time for me to go. So.
Yeah, so, um, yeah, he's talking in my ear already, so I'm just confused. So thank you, and uh, I will keep posting on here about the upcoming event on Sunday so you can come and join me. I love you. See ya.